This video will show you exactly how to sew piping into the back of your journal and how to overcome this challenge of sewing this in. These pieces look like they're so simple because they're right there together, but, but it's really one of the hardest things about sewing your journal. So join me learning the little tricks of how to get this to lay down nice and flat. Both the piping and the uh, lining are kind of challenging. These are the pieces that make up the girl's dirndl. I have the left side back, left side front, center front, center front. This is where the zipper will go. The right side front, the right side back, and the center back. I've used iron-on interfacing on the wrong side of the bodice pieces, leaving a little space around all the edges except on the side seams. There, I took the interfacing all the way to the raw edge. The first thing I'll do is sew this piping into the side seams of the center back bodice so it'll go here and here and then I'll sew these two side pieces onto the bodice. When you're stitching your piping on you might want to wait to cut your length of it because sometimes when you stitch it it doesn't lay down quite like you thought or maybe the bottom fabric stretches a little bit and all of a sudden your piping is too short. So it might be good to lay your piping out not cut it till you're all done. One of the things I like to do when I'm using piping is maybe pull about a half an inch of the cord out of the piping and snip that off. And that way, when I apply the piping to my seam, there won't be any cord down in there when it joins up with the next piece, and that'll help it not to be quite so bulky. When you're using piping, it is a very regular distance from the seam to the edge and I'm not even pinning it and measuring and I can just eyeball it and see exactly how much distance I need and I don't have to do any special pinning. So I'm starting here on the lower edges of the center back sewing the piping on. I'm using a walking foot rather than a piping foot on this dress. I go kind of slowly making sure I don't sew over the cord. As I get moving I make sure I adjust the piping as needed Sometimes you have to make little snips in the seam allowance if the piping is having a problem making it around the corners, but I don't think that's going to happen here. If you're going to use piping, take your time to make sure the needle goes in right where you want it to go, and then you'll have a really nice outcome. If you go too fast, you might end up with your piping looking uneven, too wide or too narrow, and waste a lot of time ripping out your stitching and re-sewing the whole thing. Now as I'm getting to the end, I'm being especially careful to not sew too close to the piping. I plan to pull the end of the cording out and trim the tip off, and if I accidentally stitch over the cord, it will not be easy to pull the end of the cord out. I'm going to finish off by stitching backwards to lock in the stitching. I have a nifty little tool, and I'm going to use it to pull out the piping a little ways, just like that. This makes me feel like a surgeon. How exciting! and then snip off the cord and as I pull this back the cord goes right back to about where it will be when I sew the next uh, seam. So that ended up looking pretty good. Now I'm going to do the second side. I'm cutting the entire piping off a little ways away from the seam allowance and again I'm pulling the cord out a little ways then when I sew it to the skirt, it won't be quite so bulky. And remember, you only cut the cord, you never cut the extra piping, because you want the piping fabric wrapped around the cord to go all the way to the end of the fabric. I've got the center piece of the back of the dirndl, and I've done the piping on both sides. Now, I'm going to sew those side pieces to each side here. This time I will pin these pieces together. Now I didn't have to pin the piping on because I could see what I'm doing, but I usually start by pinning it on at the bottom like this. And it's pretty easy to see where you're going to be sewing because you've got that stitch line from when you sewed the piping on to the center of the back bodice. Sometimes if I put very thick interfacing on with very thick fabric and also starched it, it can be kind of difficult to match up these these pieces because you've got this this piece kind of curving the opposite direction that the the bodice center is going. I will put my pins pretty close together. I'm going to clip the seam allowance 
up to the stitching but being really careful not to cut the stitching and this is just to help the piping which is pretty stiff to be able to turn and match up to the side back pieces which I'm sewing to this. I'm clipping about every half an inch something like that along the curve and then I will be pinning this side back pieces to the center back piece being really careful I don't put my pins in real deep what I mean is I, d I put them in pretty frequently in, and so that they only grab a little bit of fabric because the, the fabric is turning pretty pretty tightly right here now something that happens sometimes when you're matching up these two curves which go the different directions is that when you get up to the top they don't match up so what I'm going to do right now is match it up and then I'll make up, I'm ma matching up these, these seams exactly where I need it to be and then I'll go back and uh, if there's any um, variations in the, the way that it lays down I'll make that up in here in the middle. Because it is really nice to have the, the pieces up here match up perfectly when you're when you're done. Now sometimes if I'm not careful and I don't sew exactly a half an inch, seam allowances are maybe three eighths of an inch instead of four eighths or half an inch, it'll end up that it doesn't line up perfectly. And I like it if possible to line up really exactly, but it, sometimes it's just a little bit challenging. I'm kind of, you can't really see this, but I'm kind of pulling the fabric that's in the back, kind of stretch it a little bit to help it make this corner okay. This is probably one of the hardest parts about sewing the center back to the side back. It just sometimes doesn't exactly line up really great. Now that I've got the whole thing pinned, the back looks a little bit puckery and that's kind of normal. I'm going to stitch then starting at the, the bottom of the back and stitching myself my uh, the way up to the armhole. So this is kind of what it looks like as I flipped it over. This, la this matches up really well and this matches up really well and I'll be stitching that. The really cool thing is since I've already sewn the piping on I have a stitch line for reference of where exactly I'm going to be sewing and I will go fairly slowly so that I can be sure to not get too far off from the stitch line. And I'm probably going to sew just to the left of the stitch line just so that none of the stitching will show from the previous sewing. And every time that I stop to take a pin out or adjust things, I make sure that the needle is left in the fabric. I'm probably going to pull on the top fabric a little bit tighter than the bottom to make sure everything stays lined up. I know my fingers are getting in the way a little bit here. Occasionally you have to lift up your fabric, take a peek underneath and make sure nothing's getting folded under the seam allowance. Maybe pick up your presser foot and adjust things. When I get to the end, I'll go to the end and I'll stop and I'll reverse it to kind of lock in the stitches. After finishing this stitching, I'm going to just go back and kind of inspect my sewing to make sure that the piping was pretty much the same size all the way around because the contrast between the royal blue and the red is going to be pretty um, bright and 
and it really shows up so if you make a mistake it'll show now I'm looking right here and I'm seeing that I have a little tuck that I accidentally made so I'm going to rip that out right there and redo that because I don't want there to be any tucks and that's something that kind of slows you down when you're sewing after I flipped this over I found the culprit there's a little tuck right here so I'll take my seam ripper and rip it out and I'll try to ease this fabric so that that tuck is gone and then I'll re-sew that. As I look up here, lo and behold, I found another little tuck. So those are kind of things that um, it might seem kind of fussy to fix every little thing like that, but these kind of things really are ugly to me. I pulled out the funny little tucks and pinned it a little more closely like less than an inch apart and I'll run over this again and get that little boo-boo fixed. After I sew it, I'm going to turn it over and it's the moment of truth. Here was my first wrinkle and it's all fixed. And here was my second wrinkle and it's all fixed. The next thing to do is to come through and clip all of the corners again so that it will lay down really nice and flat when I iron it. When I come through I will iron the seam allowance towards the center so that the piping will lay down facing the side seam. And now to go and do the same on the other side. So I pinned it from this side I pinned the back side, the side side, and the front side, you can see it's not laying down flat, it's looking a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Um, it matches up perfectly right along the seam that I've created by sewing the piping on. So I'll go really slowly, making sure that I pull any wrinkles that are in this out and keep the, flat, the back side flat. If I don't, then I'll have the same thing happen as I did the first time with a couple of funny little tucks that I created. So I can feel with my thumb that the back side is, is, is pretty nice and flat. I had to ease this in very carefully. I lined up the top of the seam and the bottom of the seam and then I had to kind of work with this whole section where it was highly curved to get it to lay down flat. But I think I'm ready to sew now and it should work. I don't know if you can really even notice it but I, I trimmed or clipped all of the curves where the piping was sewn before I tried to ease it onto this. If you don't, it's really hard on these sharp corners to get this fabric to kind of bend to the will of the other piece. So, so coming through and clipping those just almost up to the stitching is really helpful. Another thing is when I stitched the piping, I didn't stitch it as close as I could to the cord. So where this red thread is, I'm going to stitch to the left of it, which will cover up this stitching and it will also cover up the threads that are on the uh, piping. A lot of times if you're not real careful you'll have a lot of that showing. Because I put my pins in horizontally I can leave them in and carefully sew over them. It's not always a good thing but in this case I want to be really sure that nothing slips around and um, so, so having the pins really often is really helpful. And it holds the whole fabric pretty firmly exactly where I want it to be by having the pins every, I guess about every half an inch. I get to the open part where it's just straight, then I've got the pins inch, inch and a half, inch and a half apart, it doesn't matter. Taking my time, making sure that there were no funny tucks on either side, I'm all done sewing the second seam. Now I'll pull the pins out and I'll come through and, and clip all of the curves so that when I iron it, it will really lay down flat. For a woman's dirndl that's pretty tight, 
if you have these seams in the back of the dress like these and the dress is pulled pretty tight and you don't have piping in this seam these little these little clips that I do along the corners, they actually over time could rip through the seam. I've had that happen in armholes of dirndls that don't have piping or double fold bias tape along that seam. So I'd highly recommend to take the time and do some kind of piping or some kind of something in the seam here so that when you have a stress on these little corners, like when your dress is pretty fitted, that these little um, clips don't rip right through the stitching. So that's one really good reason to put piping on these side, these side seams. I've got the center back and the side back pieces attached with the piping in here. I'm now going to iron everything and this is a step that is one of those things if you don't take your time and do it, it doesn't lay down well, it doesn't look good. You're not wasting your time if you iron it all down. The bodice is ironed. Now I'm going to move on to the lining doing the same steps. If this happens to be your first time making a dirndl, this part might drive you crazy. When I go to sew the lining pieces, which don't have interfacing on them, so they're a little more flexible, the piece that's the side piece doesn't want to join up with the center piece very easily. So I think the trick here is that when you put your pins in, put your pins in at the seam line just a little bit like an eighth of an inch so it pierces just an eighth of an inch of the fabric and don't have it go all the way into the seam allowance just a pinch about an eighth of an inch right at the seam line do the do the top of it and do the bottom and then when it starts to get at the difficult part where it's all puckery I'm on the the side seam part of it and I'm kind of pulling the I don't know if you can see a little stretch happening I'm pulling the uh, center seam tight so that it will um, have some ease. This side looks even more wonky. The thing is, when I go to stitch it, I have to make sure that all this uh, extra fabric gets pulled out of the way so we don't end up with this becoming a tuck. And that is a little bit tricky. So when I start up here, which I am doing um, at the waist, the bottom of the seam, I'll start in. I'm going to go forward and backwards and then go forward again. This part's really straightforward because we're going straight. We don't have a curve involved. So it's really easy to keep all your seam allowances straight and nice. When I get up here where it starts curving, this is where I'm using my fingers and a little bit of, I'm actually pulling my fingers apart to kind of keep all the tucks out of here and I'm going to use all the fingers available to kind of make sure that all the fabric is pulled tight out of the way and I'm only stitching right where my pins are, right at the, the uh, seam, keeping all the other fabric taut so that there will be no wrinkles. Now, this is probably the hardest part of sewing a dirndl is right here, so if you can get past this, you're home free. So I'm just pulling the fabric to keep it tight. It's not that tricky because I've got all the pins in there holding it where it's most important, which is right at the seam. Okay, I'm almost done. Now I'm back to part, the part where it's pretty straight. And so we're, we're, we're past the worst of it now. As I get up here to the, to the seam, the edge of the seam, I'm going to go backwards to lock it in. Now until I flip the until I take the pins out and flip it over, it's still going to look kind of wonky. But I guarantee, after I pull the pins out and flip it over, it's going to look pretty good. Except for I haven't trimmed, I haven't trimmed the seam allowance yet. But I see that I don't have any puckers. When I trim, when I say trim, I shouldn't use the word trim. When I clip the seam allowances, oh, I just found that I did actually get one little tuck right there. I'll redo that. I'll come through then and trim, clip the seam allowances. So it's time to rip out a little one or two stitches right here. Not a big deal. And I'm going to have to pull this to give it, to show it who's boss, I guess I'm going to say that. And I'll pin it again, making sure this time that I didn't get any tucks into the seam. I'm going to go beyond the seam a little bit, like about an inch. I want to make sure that 
everything's laying down fine. When I get up to that spot where I have the issue, which is right here, I'm going to make sure that I pull the fabric so that nothing gets tucked in there really funny. And it's, uh, like I said, it's the trickiest thing. No matter how many times you've done it, you just have to go slow to get it to lay down. And once I get past it, I'll go on about an inch and stop. And I'm sure that now it's laying down straight. I look at it and I say, yes, it is. So now I'm going to trim my corners. I, I not trim my curves. Now I'm going to clip the curves. Again, making sure that I don't clip anywhere through the stitching. If I do that, obviously it's going to be a problem. But after I clip all the curves, when I go to the ironing board to iron it, it should all lay down great. You must take the time to clip the curves. Without that, it will not lay down flat. You've got two opposing directions happening and it won't work. I'm going to go to iron now. Well, I'm all done with my dress and it turned out great. Today we were talking about how to sew this, these two side seams and put the piping on and do the lining and it is challenging. I could edit out all my mistakes, but let's be real, the same things that happened to me could happen to you and so I'll leave in the, I'll leave in the mistakes in the video. And then this is the front of it. And I think this is a good looking dirndl, especially this cute little trim along here. But we, uh, we overcame all the obstacles here. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and keep an eye out for more videos that will help you with your world of dirndls.